Woo! Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are around the world. I am so pumped for this. I cannot wait to have an incredible conversation with one of my favorite worship leaders in the world and a great friend and really share our heart for what God's about to do this weekend in Boulder, Colorado. So, as I wait for her to join, tell everybody, come on in, come on in, come on in, join the chat. It's going to be fun. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be lit. Here. Hello. Woo, Good morning. What's up? Good morning. Good morning. How is Montana? Oh, I'm just sitting here waiting for spring to show up. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, uh, now, it's yeah. Take a while. I don't know when it's going to warm up. I mean, I think it's like starting to warm up maybe a little bit, but I just I don't believe it, you know? Like we've had those days where it starts to warm up and then it snows again. So, I just feel like the weather out here is just like out to get me. And so I'm just like, you know what? I'll believe it when it's like 80 degrees for like a few days, then I'll believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of weather, I mean, you know, we, so we had this let us worship planned in Boulder. We we're doing 12 cities this year and we had it scheduled for the end of May. And then this snowstorm rolls in. And 30 degrees and a snowstorm. And we had this location on the university campus, Colorado University, which is pretty amazing because it's a, it's a, they're not known, let's say this, they're not known <laughs> to host Christian events. And, uh, and, you know, I was really bummed because I'm like, ah, oh, man, everything was set up perfectly. We were real excited. Um, but this actually allowed us to move the dates forward two weeks get a better location which is called the overlook which is literally on the on the kind of on this plateau overlooking the the front range of the rocky mountains it's gorgeous and yeah. now you get to join works us. out so works out great. i'm really really pumped so this saturday this saturday uh it's gonna be incredible guys you know i'm gonna the weather is gonna be awesome it I better be. uh, i'm not singing been a little worried about it John. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be you know 60s and yeah. 70s i think and so it looks like it's gonna be really nice and starts at 5 p.m you guys can find out all the info it's gonna be really great Do, we're doing some new songs we're gonna worship it's gonna be powerful but kim i thought it'd be cool like you know you are you did you were doing some work uh -huh. some worship stuff during covid of course and yep. uh you know we just got done we we just got done previewing you know our our, our documentary which is going to come out yeah. and it's going to kind of share the whole story all the good the guts the glory the the rough stuff everything of our experience but it got me thinking you know you're one of the only worship leaders i know that actively during covid you were you were doing stuff um now you're continuing to do stuff post covid and i wanted to just ask you what are you seeing anything different? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the post-COVID church look like to you? How's worship changed? Uh, what are we going to experience on Saturday? Like, I don't know, just what's in your heart about what's oh, happening there? Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, right at first, when I started touring, um, and it was around September of uh, 2020, um, the main thing I saw was people like really just really hungry for the Lord. And actually one of my probably, it, it probably will be forever my most favorite worship experience ever. Um, I just can't really imagine anything topping this. But um, the very first one we did was in Florida. And I did four nights in a row. And, you know, when you haven't been really singing for months, um, four nights in a row where I'm the only one singing, I'm, I'm singing for two hours straight. So by that fourth night, I lost yeah. my voice. I mean, I was just like, you know, just worn out. And um, so I, I started singing. I got through like the maybe the third song. And all of a sudden, my voice just gave out. And I, I mean, 
it was, I don't even mean like raspy. I mean like nothing. There's just a whisper coming out of me. And I look to the band wow. and I look over the side stage to Skylar, kind of like, what are we going to do? Because I, I can't even sing at all. And um, all of a sudden, the people started singing the song. And they got louder and louder. And I just looked at the band and I was just like, I think we're just going to continue with the set so we did we went through the whole set so the whole rest of the night which like i said these were about two hour nights and i was only on song like three maybe when this happened and the crowd sang all the songs they i mean i just was on stage just worshiping wow. and i was crying because i was so moved um you know people truly did not come just to hear me sing they came truly to be in the presence of god and to worship and it was so powerful mm -hmm. i mean it, it, yeah. it felt like it was just the best worship experience like we all were just in the presence of god worshiping him and nothing was more important and um it was so powerful it really changed me but i i feel like that was um that was like a really big moment for me to see while well, the hunger, the level of hunger and the, you know, I kept saying when, when you take away, when you take away the stage and all the, like the fancy lights and when you took away like the, the normal church yeah. service and everything moved to online and you couldn't have your, you know, perfectly da timed down to the minute church service. Uh, did you still have Jesus to offer people? And uh, I think that it was like really yeah. revealing actually, um, COVID and what it kind of did to churches and kind of shutting things down. I think it's really revealing of, of our hearts and our systems and the things that we've had in place. And um, I love just to see the raw hunger. And I personally, since COVID have only seen that increase. And um, I've seen just an increase in hunger and also um, an increase in, in um, I'm trying to think how to word this. Uh, Like, I don't think that people want fancy programs, if I'm making sense there. There's just been like an increase yeah. in kind of um, just give me mm -hmm. the give me the real and the raw. And um, I think people like yeah. people have even been yeah. being moved around. Jesus kind of shifting and moving people around to, you know, different churches, different cities, different states. I think there's just been kind of a, a big alignment this, that God is mm -hmm. doing. Um, just kind of setting us all up for something yeah. even greater that's coming. I think that it's been really great and really good what we've seen, but I think there's just something even better coming, an even greater move of the Lord. Yeah. So I feel really excited about that. And I feel really happy no, about being alive in this time. I mean, I don't really understand the like, um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know like if you watch the news, well, that's really discouraging, but um, I actually feel super pumped that, I was chosen by God to be alive in this time here on earth. Yeah. I, I think this is a yeah. really awesome time to be alive and to be part of the church. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I, you know, I was thinking about how all the rhythms were disrupted and, you know, 2020 and 2021 came in like a wrecking ball. And, you know, our tagline was the church has left the building and literally, I mean, we couldn't go in our buildings, you know, because of all these, these tyrannical, psychotic, you know, regulations that now we look back on and we're like, I can't believe we, we even tried to comply, you know, but, but, but once we went outside and once we, once we saw worship touch these cities and once it was like, it was like, we, we, we remembered the power of what yeah. we're carrying, you know, like it wasn't contained in a nice church service or a nice conference with a nice, you know, perfect aesthetic indoor climate at 72 degrees, but it was actually made like the sound that God's given us yeah. is made to be unleashed. It's made to be, it's like the, the roar of a lion, you know, it's meant to be released over cities and regions. And yeah. we got to experience that outside, you know, you were with us in several cities and so it, it, for me, it was hard to then go back inside. It was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to go back inside. Like I, I, you know, and I thinking forward to, to Saturday in Colorado, like, I don't know if there's a more beautiful place on planet earth to worship God in. And, 
you know, here we are gathering and every, every time we go to Colorado, we have anywhere from, you know, three to four to up to 7,000 people. And people say it's difficult there and it's hard there. And there's a lot of occult there and there's a lot of, you know, witchcraft and heaviness. And, and I, I understand all that in the Rocky Mountain region, there's a lot of heaviness and depression. But man, when you get everybody outside and you're looking at the mountains and you're filled with this majesty of who God is, you cannot help but be overcome with the power of his name and the beauty yeah. that surrounds you. And so I think that those vertical moments of worship, that's really what I'm looking forward to. And that's what I feel like we need as the church. I feel like, you know, we have a tendency in our culture to be so self-absorbed and inward focused. And oftentimes our buildings in our, 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 our you know, the way that we structure our meetings and services really just, kind of aid to that you know it's all inward focus it's all focused on us and what do we like and what do we need but outside when you're looking at the mountains it's all about him and you're just reminded again oh yeah the world is going crazy inflation is going nuts the economy this you know we got these shootings we got all this stuff happening but you're yeah. still on the throne you're still in control and there's there's a there's a i feel like there's a vertical extolling element of worship that God wants to bring back. And so that, that's, that's truly what I'm excited about it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited because, you know, I feel like your voice, you, you carry that, that summoning people, you know, it's like the roar that comes out of you calls people back into alignment and we need it in America right now. I mean, we're seeing pockets of it for sure. But in my mind, the post COVID church I don't think we can go back yeah. to the way that it yeah. used to be. I think that's good, though. I mean, <laughs> I'm all for the the change and the the yeah. shake up and the the purifying. I think all of that has been happening within the church, and I think it's really incredible and beautiful. And like I said, I think it's all just part of of God kind of what's what's coming. And hello, got my kids. I told them to stay out of here, <laughs> but I hear freaking open. <laughs> <laughs> any, any uh any last um, words you know I was gonna say, you probably days. are seeing this but i think the other thing that's really exciting to me is um i'm just seeing how how easy it is right now to share the gospel are you seeing this like, i can't tell you how yeah. many yeah. um conversations i've had just even on the airplane lately sharing the gospel and it's been wow. so easy I, I used to go down and do um, street wow. ministry in San Francisco. Me and a good friend of mine, we would join up with a ministry yeah. down there and we'd go down every Friday night and do street ministry down there. And it was insane. I mean, it's San Francisco. It was pretty wild <laughs> doing this, the ministry out on the streets down there. And um, man, I, I have never in my life seen or experienced such an easy time in like bringing the gospel and people just like, Yes, I want that. And I don't, I just, anyone on watching yeah. this today, I want, I want to encourage them in that. Like, this is, it, it's, it is not hard. You just bring the gospel and you just share with people. They're, they're hungry, hungry for hope. And also just the, the yeah. idea of there's a way out of this mess of a life. Also, I don't have to make my life perfect. Like Christ, Christ is the one who makes me good and who makes me clean and who makes me whole. And, um, man, it's just been, uh, actually really exciting and really awesome so you're probably seeing that when you're outside at these uh let us worship events yeah i mean i think that uh, i i totally agree with you i mean I, I think the you know the the darker and crazier things get the the yeah. more people are attracted and yeah. looking for light and you know the the i always tell you know believers and even people that come to our events like what's attractive is the joy you know what's attractive is is the hope what's attractive and and i think for far too long you know uh maybe we've gotten into this this thing where we have to be intense and angry to be serious about god it's like no man we're called his yoke's easy his burden is light and so like yeah, we could go into Colorado this weekend and just focus on the strongholds and just focus on the depression statistics and the suicides and it could bum us out. Or we could go in and say, we know mm -hmm. we know how we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, yeah. 
our testimony and that's what we're going to focus on. And so I, I do agree. I think that there's a, there's a, there's a longing mm -hmm. for, for joy. There's a longing for hope. They're all been, it's the best marketing strategy <laughs> yeah. of the kingdom is to be happy. And yeah. so, yep. Anyway, I'm so excited. Hey, why don't you, pray, why don't you pray that I felt when you were sharing that there's something on that, just praying that boldness yeah. to share Jesus over people. Okay. And then cool. God, yeah. I just thank you for what you're doing in your church right now. And um, I thank you that the gospel is truly good news and exciting news and hopeful news. And um, yeah. God, I, I also thank you just for, for how incredibly easy it has been lately, God, that you are just setting up people's hearts, that you're, you even go before us, those family members that have just seemed so lost or so, like it would just be the hardest thing. God, you are, you are moving and you are, um, you are showing up in people's dreams. You are, you are moving on hearts and preparing um, the soil of hearts, God. And so I just ask God that within your church that you would just give incredible boldness, God, incredible boldness and courage in yeah. not only sharing the gospel, but in bringing bringing um, love and truth and freedom, God, that um, we would just um, move with with such a boldness that we understand and we know that we've got all of heaven on our side and behind us in all of this, God, and that we would um, that we would truly uh, walk as sons and daughters of you, Jesus, the one who is above all others, all other names, God. And I, I thank you for what you're doing on the earth. I just say yes. And we want more of that in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Yep. Well, all I'll right. let you go with your see kids. You Saturday. I'll see you in Colorado, Boulder. It's going to be awesome guys. You don't want to miss it online in person, but in person is right. better. Bye. <laughs>